Warm greetings to you. I'm so happy to welcome you to this virtual service coming to you from St. John's Episcopal Church in Halifax, Virginia. I'm the rector, Tim Jones. And I invite you with joy and anticipation to turn in the Book of Common Prayer, if you have one, to page 355 as we begin with the opening acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, beginning in verse 4. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me, that they went far from me and went after worthless things and became worthless themselves? They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness and in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives. I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more, I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coasts of Cyprus and look, send a Kedar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods even, as, even though there are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 81, verse 1 and verses 10 through 16, found in the prayer book on 704, page 704. Psalm 81, 1, 10 through 16. Sing with joy to the God of our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and said, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And yet my people did not hear my voice and Israel would not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts to follow their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed the finest wheat, and satisfy him with honey from the rock. 
a reading from Hebrews 13, 1 through 8, and 15 through 16. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor 
in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host, and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place, and then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, and the meditations of our heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. While playing before a crowd of 80 or so in a college auditorium left me a little anxious. We were all a bit nervous. Some of you know how I spent a week at Mars Hill University in North Carolina earlier this summer. The school hosts an annual time of, of instruction known as the Blue Ridge Old Time Music Week. People came from North Carolina, of course, South Carolina, Ohio, Florida, California. There are retired folks, teachers, counselors, a track coach, stay-at-home moms, a couple of physicians, another clergy. We were there for a variety of classes, guitar, dulcimer, mandolin, fiddle. I took banjo. It was great. Five full days of instruction and jamming, playing music, and being like a college student eating cafeteria food, you didn't have to prepare or clean up after. But the conclusion, the last night of our time together was the daunting part. That was the time for the students showcase. Most of the morning classes and the various instruments performed one piece at the showcase. And for most of us, it was a tune we had learned just that week. And there we were, a dozen or so of us in the advanced banjo class taught by Rachel Eddy, a professional musician. There we were looking ahead to putting on display what we had learned, conscious of maybe what we hadn't. But Rachel had prepped us already. She had reassured us and commended us. It's a brave thing, she said, to come to a week like this. She said that early on, knowing that you're joining a class of a dozen or so folks you likely don't know, and then you admit in front of others that you don't know some things about playing, that you have areas that need work, that you need to learn. Well, I liked that. And she went on, something special happens though, and she was right, certainly the, dis the delight of discovering new tunes or mastering a new technique and just as powerful we found camaraderie a sense of community a shared love of music bonded us together for all of our differences and made us care not so much about performing perfectly and Rachel encouraged us about the recital too. I'll be there, she said, I've got your back. I'll cue you in and I'll accompany you on fiddle. So there we finally stood, stage lights beaming on us. We played. As I said, we were all a little nervous. It was hard to tell how we sounded, but people applauded generously on our last note. 
And afterwards, several of us said, as we bustled off the stage so the next group could do their number, a couple of us said, oh, oh, oh I had some glitches, or I made a mistake here or there. I found myself saying the same thing. I had a spot or two. I wasn't sure I hit the right notes, but we all felt good. We'd gotten the tune out. The crowd had warmly received us and all of us in our class group seemed to come to the same discovery. None of us had made the same mistake at the same time where one was dropping back or fretting the wrong note. The others had it. At any given point, fellow classmates carried the, the whole group along, the whole tune we covered for each other. I'm glad I did it. I can still play that tune, by the way. Well, to learn, to learn, usually you have to submit to some risks. You have to be willing to rely on others. To grow in your musical ability, you have to have at least a little humility and to grow in other ways, in character and faith and living a meaningful, joy-filled life. Don't we need others? Why think that spiritual growth somehow can happen when we're off by ourselves, isolated from encouragement and the shared strengths of others? Today's scripture passages all zero in on how we live with others, on how vital others are to begin with. Each of them in some way reflects the importance of humility. And that can be tricky. Maybe you heard about the preacher who said, my sermon today is on humility, and in my opinion, it's one of the finest pieces ever written. Our Bible passages today call us to be willing to live with others in a way that doesn't puff us up with pride. They slay the myth that we've got it all down, the myth that we don't need others. No, we heard, let mutual love continue. We heard that from the reading from Hebrews. Realize, he's saying, that you need a community of faith to get you through the places that maybe you're not as strong as you'd like to be. That's why he says mutual love. There's something reciprocal. It's a community thing. And that's why, that's why we have to be willing to learn from another. Imitate those who do good, he says. Benefit from their wisdom. Watch their example. You have lots to learn. Following Christ is no do-it-yourself project. You need to be humble enough sometimes to ask for help. You need others to instruct and guide. And don't think that what you learned as a child in Sunday school or maybe as a youth at a Christian summer camp is going to keep you as an adult on a growing edge. No. No constantly. We need, we need new learning experiences. And that means admitting that you are not full and complete in yourself. You've got stuff to learn. And the good news is that then you can stop obsessing about your status, about performing before others. There's freedom in saying to someone, I need your prayers. I need your counsel. There's freedom in, freedom in making making room for the goodness and the help of another person. We find ourselves liberated when we do that from what one philosopher calls status anxiety. That's what some of us suffer. So we heard in Luke, when Jesus noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. And the story unfolds. To, to, to hear it, you need to know that in Jesus' day, when people came to a social event, they'd be seated by seniority or rank, and this was a way to honor the elders or the distinguished. It would be embarrassing, Jesus suggests, to grab a seat higher up and then discover someone who is older and therefore more revered needing to sit there. People would see you gather your glass and your napkin, so to speak, and very publicly move on down. And others that are, would have already filled maybe some of the, the, the seats in the middle. So you'd go to the very bottom. 
But when you're invited, Jesus said, go and sit down at that lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you'll be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. Relax, he's saying, about your striving to impress or make a showing. Relax. Put your focus on some other things. Let that take care of itself. The way to be humble, someone has said, is not so much to think less of yourself. Sometimes that's the case. It's not often so much to think less of yourself. It's to stop thinking about yourself at all be more focused on others. So back to Hebrews, the writer gets at this. I love that phrase he uses, let mutual love continue. Such love means we, 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 we let our grip loosen on what we demand, the place of honor we think we deserve, the attention we, uh, we, we maybe feel offended about not getting. Love is not about comparison. It's about compassion. It's not about you, it's about the other person. It means willing to go out of our way to let another voice be heard or another person to find a seat or allow another person to share their burden. And while this love, this mutual love, has to do with those in the church, that's what a lot of the focus of that passage in Hebrews is uh, and with Jesus too, that at the same time, that mutual love for one another in the church doesn't limit us to our buddies. It won't limit us to our longtime members. You know, the, the, the heritage of, 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 of friends and long timers. The writer of the letter of the Hebrews adds to that call to a mutual love a call to hospitality. Hospitality, in this sense, is love for someone in the church who's new, a visitor, a stranger. And this love, too, needs to become concrete and visible and noticeable. You show it. It's being humble enough as a parish to recognize we need the gifts that others can bring. So Jesus said to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers or relatives or, or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you already get your reward. No, when you put on a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and then you'll be blessed. Hospitality is love for someone we might be, over, we might be tempted to overlook for their lack of social status. We might be tempted to overlook them because maybe we don't even necessarily like them. Still though, we're called to love them. So don't neglect us offering hospitality in your church, says Hebrews. In doing so, some have entertained angels without even knowing it. Focusing over much on ourselves, on our standing, and our place, and our proud heritage. That might close us off. We find joy showing kindness to those we know, and we welcome. We welcome. We welcome the stranger. As we do, we may feel a bit of anxiety, we may feel stretched, but as we share in a mutual love, we just might also find surprising blessings. Amen. Prayers of the People are Form 4, as found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 488. Your response when I say, Lord, in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Justin Archbishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, Tim, our rector. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good, especially Joseph, our president, Glenn, our governor, Dexter, our mayor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for first responders, for medical workers, educators, for all who serve in law enforcement, for those serving in the military, Alex, William, Dexter, Jeremiah, Jonathan, David, Cameron, Byron. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who, who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. Bring them the joy of your salvation. Especially, we pray for Brenda, Edwina, Kathy, Robert, Tucker, B, Lot, Lynn, Bill, Norma, Jess, Dan, Jackson, Evelyn, Anson, Edna, Hilda, and Violet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our concluding collect, I invite you to say out loud with me, the traditional form of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A prayer of confession found in the prayer book, page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We begin with a time of silent confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Wherever you find yourself, to wherever you go this day and in the days of the week to come. Remember these words, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.